Okay, so let's start with ordinary derivatives. Okay, now suppose we have a single variable function f x. Okay, now we can uh, we can look at how this function changes incrementally by looking at how the independent variable changes. So, for example, this is your f as a function of x, and this is x, and let's say this is your function. So how this function changes from one value of x to a value of x plus dx. So how this function changes. So this is df. Okay, by just looking at a proportionality constant, we call the derivative of f respect to x. So this is a proportionality proportionality constant. And this tells us how rapidly the function f changes uh, uh, varies when we change the argument x by a small amount dx. Okay. So the geometric interpret interpretation of your ordinary derivative is that your ordinary derivatives tells you the slope of your function. Okay. Slope of the graph at any given point along the horizontal or independent axis. Okay. So that's easy. But in terms of vectors, okay, what we now uh, uh, start with are what we call the gradient. Okay. Now, remember this function is one dimension. Okay. This one dimension is along x. Now, let's say if we have a, an, another function that is a function of x, y, and z. Okay, so this is now a three-dimensional function, and this is a scalar function, by the way. Okay, the scalar function is a function of three variables, let's say temperature along in a room, in the horizontal axis, and vertical axis. Now, this changes, okay, in this, uh, in this scalar function happens in three dimensions, okay? The total differences or the how much the scalar function T changes, okay, in spatial coordinates, is given by the partial derivative of your function t with respect to x dx plus partial derivative of that function with respect to y dy plus partial derivative of t with respect to z dz. Okay? So this is the three-dimensional version of your ordinary derivative. So what happens here is that, okay, when you change the net, uh, the, the general, uh, con the general uh, condition or description of how this function changes when we alter the three variables, x, y, and z by infinitesimal amounts, dx, dy, dz, Okay, is, in the, is dependent on how the temperature changes, how the scalar 
function changes along each direction. Okay, now this expression stems from the fact that stems from the uh, from the from the idea that when we take the dot product between this function between this vector this function and this function and we take the dot product of this vector function with dx x hat dy y hat and dz z hat so what happens here here we define what we call the gradient of e and what is this this is just the uh, the uh, increment length incremental length dl so in three dimension let's say this is your dl it has three components it has an x component dx x hat it also has a y component dy y hat and it has a z component dz z hat okay so this is dot d l okay so here we define this gradient operator as the operation uh, operation sorry the gradient of t which is equal to derivative of t with respect to x x hat plus derivative of t with respect to y y hat plus derivative of t respect to z z hat so again we call this the gradient of Okay, please do not call this del t. We call this the gradient of t. Okay. Now, what is now the geometric interpretation of the gradient? Okay, so the magnitude, remember this is the Okay, so this is a dot product. So if we're going to take the magnitude of dt, this is equal to the magnitude of this vector times the magnitude of the length. times cosine theta. So if this is this gradient, this is your dl. Okay, so if your particle move from this point to this point, this variable is just the product product of the magnitude of this vector, the, uh, the, of the, the magnitude of the gradient of t times the magnitude of your infinitesimal length or displacement dl times the cosine of the angle between them. Okay, now the gradient of t physically means that 
the gradient of t points in the direction of maximum increase of the function t. Okay, so for example, if we have, for example, uh, let's say if you're going, if you're familiar with, uh, uh, if you're familiar with uh, terrain, okay, or what we call the, uh, okay, terrain. Okay, so let's say we have a mountain. Okay, so there are points within the mountain that are high. And there are points within the mountain that are low. Okay, so this is in one dimension. This is the mountain looks like. But you're going to see a map, for example. Okay, what we can see is something like this. example something like that okay now you when you see gradient okay uh, the when I say the gradient points in the direction of maximum increase of the function T so let's say this lines are this line are collection of points of equal heights. So for example, if we walk along this line, the height, your height from the ground doesn't change. Okay, but when you transfer from this line to this line. It, uh, let's say the height changes and let's say that change del is positive. Okay, so the gradient of T is a vector that points toward maximum increasing uh, uh, maximum uh, maximum slope, for example. For example, if, for example, from here, from this height, okay, and then comparing that height here, okay, you can go to this height from this height several ways, diba? right? You can go from this point towards this point, or you can go from this point towards this point. They have the same change in heights. However, the horizontal line or the horizontal displacement is longer here than here. Okay, so we can say that when you go from, uh, when you do this path, when you take this path from this point towards this point, okay, a small horizontal distance covered you already reach that same or that height, uh, that, that's, that change of height. So this is your gradient. The gradient always points towards increasing value of your scalar field. Okay, do you follow? So that's your gradient. And from the gradient, we can derive what we call the vector operation, the vector operator then, which you're already familiar with. And this is equal to x hat derivative with respect to x plus y hat derivative with respect to y, z hat derivative with respect to z. We call this the vector operator. Okay, the vector operator itself do not mean anything. It means something if you apply this on a physical quantity. So in our case here, we apply or we allow this operator to act on a scalar field. 
And by doing so, we are actually getting the gradient of that scalar field. But there are other ways to allow this vector operator then in other physical quantities. We can act it, as I mentioned before, on a scalar quantity. So this vector operator acts on your scalar field. We can also do, uh, allow this vector operator to act on another vector, let's say vector A, via the dot product operation or via the cross product operation. Because remember that the vector operator del is a vector. So it can act on a vector by using the dot product or the cross product. We call this the divergence of A. And we can also do this, we can also call, the, we call this the curl of A. We do not read this as del dot A. And we do not, uh, we do not read this as del cross A. We call this divergence of A, and we call this the curl of A, okay? Now, as you will notice that, when you take the gradient of T, the resulting function is a vector function. So that means we can also take the dot product of the del operator to your gradient. We call this the Laplacian of your scalar field. The result of this is a scalar quantity. So out of this one, two, three, four operations, using the vector operator del, only one produces a vector and that is your curl. The rest, gradient, divergence, and the Laplacian produces scalar quantity. Okay. Questions? Tanong po. Questions po? Okay. Wala? Are you sure? Okay. Now, uh, we are going to uh, use a lot of this functions or a lot of these operations in our class this term. That includes getting the gradient of a, of a scalar potential, getting the divergence of a vector field. It can be magnetic. It can be electric field. You can also take the curl of electric and magnetic field. So what's important here is that we understand the general or the uh, the geometric interpretation of such quantity. 